As a society, we generate a tremendous amount of waste. But there are those amongst us who don't see rubbish, but instead find opportunity. Today we've travelled to Melbourne, Australia to visit an inspiring young family who have done an incredible job of using some old rubbish and turning it into a beautiful converted school bus. Hey, good nice to, meet to meet you, mate. You too. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Jen. Welcome. How are you? Hi, Lovely I'm really to meet good. You. Thanks. You too. Welcome. Guys, this bus is incredible. <laughs> the first thing I notice about it, it's a lot higher than an ordinary bus, isn't it? You've actually raised the roof quite a lot. It is. It's a meter. Four point three. So we've raised it up a meter. So wow. it's kind of the height of a double decker but started off as a single decker. Yeah. And that's still totally okay for driving with it on the roads mm -hmm. and everything? We raised yeah. it, 4.5 is the legal height. So we raised it to 4.3 thinking that we'll have things on the roof. And luckily, because we now have solar panels on the roof, so <laughs> we're still just under the legal limit, yeah. Great, so yeah. you mentioned the solar panels. Is this an off-grid bus? It is, yeah. yeah. So we just have a battery bank inside, a couple of solar panels, it's enough for us. And you can see already from the outside, this is no ordinary bus. You've got some really unique looking windows on here. I love the little rooftop area at the back there as well. It's our little kind of margarita sunset deck. <laughs> <laughs> it's where the kids get up and pretend to be pirates. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So how long have you actually lived in this bus now? We're seven in our seventh years? year. Seven Coming years. up to seven yeah. and a half years yeah. full time living on here. And how did you actually come to be living in the space? Um, we, we were traveling a lot. Our we, time in Australia was kind of renting houses, setting up houses, then going back overseas, so getting rid of all our stuff, and it just wasn't working. Yeah. So we, we wanted to find a, a way where we could kind of continue traveling, but not have to get all our pots and pans again and rent a new house and sign a new lease. And, we and hadn't this. thought about it, but we drove past the bus company on the highway where Brandon grew up in the Blue Mountains and saw this for sale, like this little cute old bus and it was white and smaller and just, you know, a school bus. It was so. my school bus. So this was actually your school bus? Yeah. <laughs> I went to primary school on this very bus. Wow. So it was, yeah, it was quite a magical moment <laughs> when we realised that and it was for sale and we kind of thought this could work. That's meant and to be. So we did yeah. it, yeah. How does it feel having that kind of history built into your home, that this was the very bus that took you to primary school? It's hard to put it into words, but it, it's like a strange dream. We got the bus and I lay down inside the bus and I just had all these memories and smells of, of <laughs> my childhood and, you know, going to school on this thing. And, you know, seven and a half years later, it's still our family home. Perfect. <laughs> well, I cannot wait to see what you've done on the inside. Can we have a look? Please. All right. All right. <laughs> wow. Here we are. It's <laughs> our home. This <laughs> is like walking into an art piece. I mean, look at this place. It's incredible. We're kind of used to it, but yeah, we are used to people kind of having the same reaction. What's the story with all of this stuff? Um, it's kind of a collection. We both really love traveling and we love collecting treasure that we find on our travels. And we also love very in random, interesting things. And, and we, we love we assembling, of, we, assembling things in specific ways. We like putting things together. Arrangements. So, yeah, it just become a thing that we do together, mm. you know, like Composers I guess decor. Of treasure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And being in such a tiny space, sometimes things come and other things have to go and mm. things always have to have a little place that they live in. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, you know, be on that line between clutter and decor, <laughs> but it's all our treasure and stuff that we love and we just wanted to keep it all with us, but working with the space that we have. For us, it, it feels like everything has its it feels, place. It feels kind of zen, mm. like a busy zen. A busy zen. Yeah. <laughs> well, everything is just so in character to the bus. It all looks like it belongs. And you're right, it all feels like it does have its place. And like every little piece in here is telling its own little story. 
Yeah, there's pretty much hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of stories in here. So yeah, firstly, we built the bus all out of reclaimed materials, pretty much off the side of the road. Yeah, hard rubbish. Hard rubbish. A lot of all the big building materials we just found that people had thrown away. And a lot of the small, you know, beautiful antiquey old bits as well. We managed to find and. We were quite ruthless with our design that we wanted everything to have as much character as possible. We had this idea that we would only allow things 50 years or older onto the bus. And at first that even kind of spanned across to screws. And so I was kind of extracting <laughs> flathead screws out of old bits of wood, which I quit after about 50. Personally, I love materials that were created in a time where people really cared about their work and they put mindfulness and enthusiasm into their work. And it kind of breaks my heart when I see piles of rubbish and there's just this beautiful thing from the 20s in there with 40 layers of paint over it. And once you strip mm. that back, you know. It's like things like that have a life of their own. They've got a character. So a lot of the time when we find things in the rubbish, it's like we're rescuing these creatures that Orphans. have been like thrown <laughs> away and forgotten about and, you know, giving them a little bit more of a life or putting them in a hospice in for a cherished abandoned, <laughs> abandoned yeah. um, articles. So tell me about the design of this bus and how you've laid everything out. Mm, it was all kind of trial and error, really. We originally built a shower and had it all nice and stone and waterproofed it. And then because we found all of our things in rubbish, we didn't find the right water tank because when with a vehicle, you have to have one of those ones that has the ridges, baffled, baffled water tanks. Mm. And, you know, we didn't want to buy a new one because we didn't, you know, we, our philosophy is kind of not, not to just keep consuming everything when there's so much around to be used. And we just never came across the right one and over probably three years living on the bus and having all our clothes in a substandard wardrobe situation, we decided that the shower had to become the wardrobe and we would just move bathroom business off the bus, which right. made everything feel a lot more simple. So originally we were traveling a lot and we would, it was a thing, you know, we would have to make sure that every stop or every sleeping place had to have a bathroom. In the last few years, we've been parked up a lot more. So probably for nine months of the year. So we're on properties now. We build a compost toilet if it doesn't have one already and sort out the water situation. So it's never been an issue. So right now we are standing in your kind of kitchen dining area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, this is our kind of all purpose dinner table, chess table, jigsaw puzzle, colouring in, kid mayhem table. We just made it smaller, actually. It used to come out to here, and we felt like it just, you know, didn't feel open enough and we didn't need such a big table, so we just made a smaller one, and the smaller one now has one leg. The other right. one had it's four. A, yeah, it's a <laughs> one-legged table. <laughs> This is some 35-year-old Western Red Cedar that my dad swore he would never give me. <laughs> and just recently he broke and he said, all right, you can have that cedar. That's what happens nice. with persistent yeah. asking. <laughs> yeah. And the um, stove, the cooking we've area. got a gas stove here and we've got a wood stove. So in winter we can use the wood stove and most of the time we use the gas stove. Yeah, this is our every day. Oven. They don't make them like they did in 1912. It's it a really solid beautiful. oven. And then this... Yeah, in winter, we still cook on this. Sometimes it's got a hot water tank inside. So the bus is toasty within 10 minutes of lighting this thing. Mm. You know, we triple insulated everything. So we close the hatches, light this thing up, and we can toasty. take off our clothes. <laughs> it gets really warm. This sink, one of our friends was moving out of their house and the, the owner of the house was renovating and he pulled all the things out and chucked it on the side of the road outside the house and we drove no. past and we said, no, the sink. Her son's first bath was in this sink and we were living with them <laughs> at that point and so we just could not drive past this yeah. thrown out sink. And we sink. actually had a metal sink in here and when we saw this, we were like, the metal one's going, we're having this one, it's an upgrade. <laughs> and then up here is the kids' room, I see. It is. Yes. It's <laughs> getting smaller as they are growing. <laughs> You know, they used to be able to run around up there and not bump their heads. And now our son Liminal, who is eight, 
can't stand up in his room now. They still spend a lot of time up there doing things, but one idea I had was potentially cutting, cutting the roof off and making it into a pop top. Um, but they love their bedroom. All their friends love that bedroom. They're always up there like little pirates, crow's nest. And then what's in the space back here? So this is our brand new fridge that we're very <laughs> happy about, um, which is a three-way fridge we have usually running on gas. And the pantry and food storage, all of our spices and magic potions and you know things we use quite on a daily level. My proudest moment, I think, was this slide out oh, food drawer. That is cool. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And he's cut two layers, Double layers of holes. So, so nothing that can even chink at the bottom. Slide <laughs> down underneath. This space feels like a treasure bag here. It's just like, I don't know, it's like stepping into a different world, like an old apothecary or something. Mm. Yeah, this was actually the hardest part of the conversion was lowering the floor so that we can stand up under here. Right. Because originally it was about a foot taller. Right. And I didn't want to have to kind of crouch down every time we, we came back here. So we had to cut and the chassis was low enough, luckily, that we could drop it just enough. So... You know, I'm about six foot and I'm comfortably, yeah, you... Yeah, I'm six four and I'm still still standing, okay. so... Okay, six four. Yeah, yeah, that's great. There you go. <laughs> um, so back here, we've got the laundry sink originally when we had little babies with nappies that needed washing. Um, now it's just our, our dish washing area and our little kind of succulent garden. And then the famous walk-in road, <laughs> yeah, mostly Jen's beautiful things are kept. One thing on the bus which feels like it's from outer space <laughs> is, is the fridge, fridge which even has a blue light inside. <laughs> it's such an upgrade for us. Ours was an old kind of, we got it very second hand. It was 82 model and yeah. this is the same brand three-way fridge which is 2017. So it took us a long time to figure out how to work it because we're yeah. not used to such modern <laughs> <laughs> technology. And then what's down the other end over here? Well, this is our bedroom and lounge area down here. This is probably the most used area. This the little couch, spot right here. <laughs> the bookshelves. So, you know, this is where we have our quiet moments reading. This section here we're really proud at the moment because we've upgraded from kids toy area to record section record booth. <laughs> nice. yeah. this is actually the only kids things that we've got in the house out of their bedroom which is their curiosity shop where they <laughs> they have a whole bunch of random things in there which they buy from each other and sell to each other <laughs> and then they kind of so cute. they arrange them in strange new ways and yeah, they have a lot of fun in there. We encourage that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you both sleep up here. So yes. we have a roll-out bed. This took us a few years to figure out. We used to just have a futon on a bed base mm -hmm. and it took up the whole room pretty much. And we came back from Thailand one year lugging this big <laughs> roll-up mattress. And now every morning I just roll it away and I've got this whole room. Mm. One day we just had a brainwave <laughs> and that was it, upgrade. So yeah, that's my favourite spot in the bus. And those windows there yeah. are just beautiful. Mm. Yeah, the light. I like it when we're slightly under a tree because then the pink light goes a bit purple. So <laughs> depends where we park, how it looks. So day-to-day -day life living in this space, what's it like? It's fun. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it every morning waking up and I you know, just look around and it's so, it makes me so happy mm. to wake up and just be in the bus. It's my favourite place. It, so. it, it inspires us because it's something we created. It's, it's our art piece and it is our home as well. So it, it's kind of like has a dual purpose. It constantly feeds us with more creative ideas and it's a family home, like the kids love being here they've never really complained yeah, it no. is all they know but they yeah. show off a lot when they meet new people they want to tell them stories of you know all the little things because you know when 
people come on the bus, there's often a lot of questions and they're always asking and the kids have overheard us telling people things and, you know, and then there's things that they've been with us when we're travelling and we've bought things together and they would have, you know, almost like a little spiel <laughs> about stuff. It's really cute. And, and so they've got their favourite things that they like to show off as well. You know, a few things, little treasures. So are you static with the bus when the kids are in school? We are. We've That's all changed since he started school. We mm -hmm. were very, very mobile, pretty much constantly before that. Now we are sedentary for nine months of the year, pretty yeah. much. Building this space, you've obviously used a tremendous amount of reclaimed materials. Mm -hmm. It's all your labour. Could you hazard a guess at how much this project actually cost you to build? Ooh. Yeah, we have yeah, we kind have. of roughly figured it out well, at around 20 grand. Like ev everything in here, perhaps you could say, yeah, every, including the building of the bus. Everything in here and the building. What does this bus teach you about life? Like what lessons have you got from living in this space? Firstly, that there is enough resources out there to build your own space. Yeah, or to I, do anything with. Or to do you know. anything with. I think really what we learned is that pretty much most of what you would want to do in life you can do without buying anything new. We never really were much for, you know, buying before, but since building the bus and finding that we really didn't have to buy, you know, pretty much anything new to build with, we could, we could use, recycle everything, we started doing it with everything in life yeah, so we don't buy new clothes we don't buy new like much stuff so we kind of managed to drop ourselves out of just being consumers in you know a lot of ways our ethic is that you know we'll find something beautiful and work with it you know we don't have the desire to consume a specific thing we'll work with what is already here and that's worked really well and also with kids living in a little space and a moving space that is putting us in different places in different situations with kids. So there's a lot of lessons in life with that and adventures and so we learn a lot. And they always, the kids always have the, the stability of the bus, their bedroom, their books, their toys. But it's nice to be able to open the door and always have a new environment outside to explore. So I, I feel as though they've got the best of both worlds in a way. They've got the familiarity and the stability in some sense, but also the, the true chaos and the freedom that is a, a part of the universe. So, yeah. This bus is just filled with so many treasures and it has absolutely become a treasure itself. Thank you so much for sharing your space so with welcome. me. You're <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon and Jen have done the most incredible job of converting this old school bus into a wonderful home for their family. The fact that this bus right here used to drive Brandon to school, I think just adds that final little bit of character that truly means this family has found a place where they belong. 